Okay, now I'm going to show you how to enter a piecewise function on a TI-83 or TI-84 calculator. And it may be different on other models, but these are calculators that are still pretty common in calculus classes and other classes. And this is how, this is how to do it on the TI-83 or TI-84. One thing that is helpful to know is that in, in, when you're dealing with computers, and this might be familiar to you if you've ever done any computer programming, um, computers deal with true and false. Okay, when you make a comparison or you uh, have a condition that is either true or false, computers use the number 1 to represent true and the number 0 to represent false. So if you said this, for example, if you said x is greater than 5, okay, this is a mathematical statement that is either true or false. And this will evaluate to either a 1 or a 0, depending on whether it is true or false. So just as an expression ends up evaluating to a value, like if I, if I said this, for example, if I said x plus 3, the computer would interpret this as a number, whatever number x is, plus 3. Okay, so this expression evaluates to a number. Well, this expression evaluates to a number also, and it evaluates to the number 1 if the expression is true, and the number 0 if the expression is false. Okay, watch this. Let's take the calculator. I'm going to put a number here, 8. I'm going to say 8, and then I'll store that in variable x. So the variable x in the computer's memory now has a value of 8. And if I say, let's say x is greater than 5, so watch this, x, and then if you look on the math key right here, see the second function on the math key, it says test, hit second test, and there option 3 is greater than, so let's say x is greater than, and I'll type in 5, okay, x is greater than 5, well what is x? x is 8, we just put the value 8 in there, so when I say x is greater than 5 and hit enter, look what it says, it says 1 because 1 means true in the in the computer in, in the computer world in most computer programming languages 1 is used for true and 0 is used for false if i said x and then let's do another test if i said x is greater than uh, there's greater than x is greater than 78 this should say 0 because x is not greater than 78 and there it is 0 means false okay so keep that in mind 1 is used to indicate true, and 0 is used to indicate false. Okay, now hit y equals. Let's put in some equations. Clear out anything that's in there, in here. And let's put in the equations we were using earlier. Let's put in x squared. Okay, so x squared. And now do this. Now hit the divided by key. x squared divided by. And then in parentheses, put x is less than or equal to 2. So let's type x. And then for the less than or equal to, we need to hit the test right there, the second function on the math key. So we hit second test, and less than or equal to there is option number 6. So go down there, or just press the 6 key. So x is less than or equal to 2, and then close parentheses. And now go down to y2. We'll enter a second function. And we'll put in the function 2x minus 3, and put this in parentheses, 2x minus 3, close parentheses, and then put divided by, and then in parentheses, x is greater than 2. So x, and then second test, that's option number 3, x is greater than 2, close parentheses. Now what we've put in here is a piecewise function. This is the function, f of x is x squared, if x is less than or equal to 2, and 2x minus 3 if x is greater than 2. Let's go ahead and set our window. Whoops, set our window and graph this. I'm going to hit window. I'm going to make my x values go from negative 5 to positive 5 with a scale of 1. And the y values are also going to go from negative 5 to positive 5. And those are the same, basically the same viewing window that we had on our graph er earlier in the earlier example. I hit graph and here we go there's a parabola and it stops at x equals 2 and then it picks up with the line right there and that's it that's a piecewise function graphed and you could hit trace and you could trace around on that 
and, um, and see different x values and different y values along the curve. You might need to switch between y1 and y2 with the up and down arrow keys. Now why did this work this way? Well, Let's look back at the, the, the definition here. y1 x squared and then we have divided by x is less than 2. Okay, x is less than 2 is a comparison which is going to either be true or false and the computer will then interpret that as either a 1 or a 0. So the computer starts over on the left side of the screen and it just iterates across and for each x value as it goes across it plugs in those x values and plots these and when x is less than 2 this little comparison in parentheses uh, right over here right right there that comparison evaluates to true and it becomes a 1 what's in parentheses in the denominator is a 1 so you have x squared divided by 1 which is just the same as x squared so when x is less than 2 that y1 graph is just a graph of x squared then when x is greater than 2 that comparison which says x is less than 2 that becomes false and the computer interprets false as a 0 and then y1 is x squared divided by 0 for the x values greater than 0 that denominator x is less than or equal to 2 evaluates to false which is 0 and you can't divide by 0 if y1 is x squared over 0 well that's undefined division by 0 is undefined so the value of the function ends up being undefined for those x values and then if you go down and look at y2 when x is less than 2 the denominator over here is false and the function is undefined when x is less than 2 because false is 0 and you can't have a division by 0 and when x is greater than 2 that comparison is true which the computer interprets as a 1 and you just have 2x minus 3 divided by 1 so we basically use the boolean logic there the greater than and less than uh, true or false values to cause the function to be either defined or not for certain values of x and that's that's how to in enter piecewise functions on a TI-83 or TI-84 calculator